cette conférence de presse après la rencontre du haut représentant, vice-président de la Commission européenne, José Borrell, et la ministre des Affaires étrangères du Canada, Mme Annie Joly. Ils vous vont informer sur les contenus de la discussion qui vont continuer après ce rendez-vous de presse. Et après, nous avons une courte opportunité pour quelques questions. Donc, on commence avec le haut représentant. High representative, you have the floor. Vitaine de masse, Well, you will have the floor. Go ahead, Joseph. Uh, look, Mélanie, c'est un grand plaisir Merci. de vous accueillir uh, à Bruxelles. L'Union européenne et le Canada ont établi une relation importante, je dirais unique. Mm -hmm. uh, le Canada est un ami proche, un lointain du point de vue géographique, proche du point de vue de nos rapports, un partenaire précieux, et nous apprécions l'engagement de longue date euh, en, que vous avez envers la paix et la sécurité, et nous sommes reconnaissants au Canada pour sa importante contribution aux missions de sécurité et de défense européenne que vous avez développées au fil des années. Et aussi, nous travaillons ensemble au sein du G7, de l'OCE, de l'OTAN, sur un nombre de priorités qui sont clés pour la politique étrangère de l'Union et, il faut le dire, plus récemment, sur l'évolution de la sécurité à l'Est de l'Europe. And this was the main discussion point today. How not The visit of the Canadian Foreign Minister has taken place in the context of intense diplomatic activities in the European Union, across the Atlantic, and in Ukraine. Both of us have visited the country in the past few days, so we know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We exchanged our assessment of the situation on the ground and about uh, ongoing international efforts in this regard. Uh, Melanie and I will share the deep concern about the provocations that Russia military is building up on the Ukrainian border and recall our support to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We reiterate our call on Russia to de-escalate the situations. We equally reject the Russians' attempts to undermine the fundamental principles of European security and to try to redefine the security arrangement and to restore old-fashioned and outdated spheres of influence in you. Well, this meeting today is a good occasion to reaffirm our determination to face this challenge and underline the intense consultation with all key allied partners. Nous avons certainement aussi discuté de notre coopération bilatérale en matière de sécurité et défense. Le Canada est un partenaire naturel qui nous a rejoint dans le projet PESCO sur la mobilité militaire et il fournit des experts aux missions civiles de l'Union européenne en Cisjordanie et justement en Ukraine. Et pendant le déjeuner, nous allons discuter de d'autres sujets, l'Éthiopie, l'Afghanistan, le Venezuela et Haïti, des points chauds, et où se déroule malheureusement des crises humanitaires sans précédent, en particulier en Afghanistan et Éthiopie. And finally, allow me, Melanie, to re-insist on our mutual commitment to develop and strengthen the partnership between the European Union and Canada. Even further, in order to face jointly the world challenges. Once again, it's a pleasure, c'est un plaisir de recevoir à Bruxelles. Merci. merci Joseph, ça me fait vraiment plaisir d'être avec toi ici, à tes côtés. Euh, merci pour l'invitation et j'ai bien hâte aussi de poursuivre la conversation qu'on a entamée un petit peu plus tôt aujourd'hui. Euh, 
Mon objectif, bien entendu, est de renforcer cette amitié, cette coopération que nous avons entre le Canada et l'Union européenne. Euh, bien entendu, ce partenariat est, est fondé sur des valeurs, des valeurs communes. Et euh, bien entendu, aussi, nous avons plusieurs priorités euh, qui nous unissent, notamment celle de la sécurité, de la prospérité et, euh, bien entendu, de plusieurs questions en lien avec les droits humains. Parlons maintenant de l'Ukraine. Euh, vous l'avez, tu y as fait mention, euh, Joseph, un peu plus tôt. Euh, tous les deux, nous avons eu l'occasion d'aller en Ukraine. So, uh, High Representative uh, Burrell and I had the chance to, uh, diff at different times, go to Ukraine, and we were able to share a perspective of uh, what we heard, what we saw, and what is going on right now in the country. Let me be clear, Canada stands with Ukraine, and Canada also believes that diplomatic discussion, diplomatic dialogue, must be further pursued through all diplomatic channels. Um, allies are united on the question, and it is fundamental for me, for our government, to be here and to continue these conversations. Soyons clairs, nous sommes solidaires avec les Ukrainiens. Et nous savons que la menace russe est réelle et c'est pourquoi je suis ici, après un voyage en Ukraine, pour continuer, c'est pour parler diplomatique, afin d'assurer une stabilité dans le pays et dans la région. Et c'est pourquoi aussi euh, que nous y consacrons, j'y consacre énormément de temps et d'énergie. Obviously, also, Canada stands with the EU. Uh, we firmly oppose Uh, Russian aggression and military action against Ukraine. We reject Russia's false narrative that Ukraine or NATO are threats. The EU and Canada are both important partners in this process, in this process alongside many others. The recently launched diplomatic process offers Russia two options. They can choose meaningful dialogue or swift severe consequences. We, of course, appreciate the EU's collaboration in, uh, on many deterrence measures, including economic ones. Canada will be ready to take additional measures, particularly with respect to the financial sector. Canada and the EU will continue to work together on these measures if necessary. Joseph, I appreciate our ongoing bilateral partnership. We've met at NATO, at the OACE. It's now uh, our fourth meeting together. Uh, and I like the fact that we can cooperate on many issues, including on security and defense, um, as well as the strong support we have together for increased cooperation between NATO. NATO and the EU are important partners and will continue to work together through mutually reinforcing work, each organization can strengthen the transatlantic area in response to new and emerging threats. Allies are united in the face of a possible uh, further invasion of Ukraine, and that's exactly why I'll be meeting also Secretary General Stoltenberg a bit later today. Dans de nombreux domaines, l'Union européenne est un partenaire important pour le Canada qui partage les mêmes idées. Nous soutenons le multilatéralisme et un système international fondé sur les règles. C'est ce même système qui a permis au Canada et à l'Union européenne euh, d'approfondir nos liens au fil du temps. Nous coopérons bien évidemment en matière de commerce, d'investissement et de migration. Ce sont ces liens étroits qui nous permettent aussi de collaborer sur ce qui reste la plus grande crise de l'histoire moderne, les changements climatiques. I also want to thank the EU for its cooperation in the fight against COVID-19. Uh, together, we're working on vaccine research, border issues, supply chain. In fact, EU-based producers supplied the great majority of Canada's vaccines in the first few months of the pandemic and remain a major global supplier of vaccines. And for that, Canadians, Joseph, are very thankful. Um, as mentioned by, uh, by High Representative uh, Borrell, uh, we uh, will be uh, continuing our discussion over lunch 
and we'll have the chance to talk about many issues, including Afghanistan, Ethiopia, uh, Haiti, uh, and also the Indo-Pacific and Venezuela. So looking forward to continuing your conversations. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Thank you. So now we take a question. David, go ahead. Thanks very much, Peter. Uh, David Herzenhorn with, uh, with Politico. Mr. High Representative, I wonder if you could tell us how you, how you interpreted uh, President Macron's remarks yesterday that the, that the EU should present its own security proposal to the Russians. Is there even a format for that since the Russians' demands came to, in writing to NATO and uh, the U.S.? But even more importantly, does the EU agree with President Biden that a minor incursion into Ukraine would have less severe consequences? Is a minor incursion acceptable? And, and Madam For Foreign Minister, if you're just picking up off the same question, I think those of us who do cover NATO know that there's no closer NATO ally to Ukraine than Canada. Do you worry that some of your other allies are not as committed? Uh, does Canada share this idea that a minor incursion uh, into Ukraine would be something less, there would be less severe response to that? Is there such a thing? Thank you. Uh, me first, no? <laughs> he asked me the question first. <laughs> it's your house. <laughs> it's your house indeed. Look, uh, nothing new but important. Certainly there is a big threat on the Ukrainian border, and we take this threat very seriously. We consider these massing groups on the Ukrainian border something that uh, can be, it's a threat and can be a big danger. And we are working together with the Allies in order to be ready to implement an answer which will be very costly for Russia if uh, there is any kind of aggression against uh, Ukraine. So the warning of President Biden goes exactly on the same direction in which we have been working those days. There is a threat, an important threat. We take it seriously and we are working on the answer. Minor incursion? Is there such a thing? Sorry? A minor incursion. That's what he said. He said minor incursion. Let's see. Uh, a threat is a threat. And certainly when you match 140,000 troops in the border, you can use it in many different ways. On about uh, President Macron, he was there. And uh, I think that uh, it's also an important statement, but uh, it's part of what we have been saying since the beginning that the Europeans have to be presenting their view on this issue, that uh, nothing can be agreed about the European security or the security in Europe without the participation of the Europeans. And President Macron didn't say that the Europeans were going to present their own proposals to the Russians, he said that they, together with the Allies, the Europeans have to have in mind what do they understand as a security order in Europe. And on that, I completely agree with President Macron. Well, let me be clear first. Russia is already in Ukraine. We're talking about a real threat of a further invasion of Ukraine. So in that sense, like my colleague just mentioned, a threat is a threat. And we, we are very, very much concerned of this for, about this further invasion of Ukraine. Um, second, uh, I had the chance to have a long conversation with my colleague, our colleague, Le Drian, last night. Uh, we obviously uh, uh, talked about the situation uh, in Ukraine. Uh, Canada's role right now is to make sure that we have a strong unity within the alliance, and also uh, we are that country that uh, bring people to the table and make sure that uh, we can find a solution. So I'm spending a lot of energy and time uh, with our European partners and the group of Normandy, particularly France and, and, and Germany, to make sure that uh, we can find a diplomatic path and also a diplomatic solution to this very real threat that is posed against Ukrainians. Just a quick follow-up. We had a question of Paul Gaston from Radio Canada, so pretend I have an excellent French, French <laughs> accent, which is um, about Canada's decision on whether to supply arms to Ukraine. Has Canada made a decision? Um, and what is your message to uh, the Europeans? Would Canada like uh, European allies also to beef up military resources in Ukraine, either through personnel 
or weapons from our colleagues at Radio Canada? So first and foremost, Canada is already also in Ukraine through Operation Unifier uh, because we have 200 military that are training the National Guard and the Army Forces. In the context of Operation Unifier, we're not alone. Uh, Sweden and also uh, Denmark are participating on Operation Unifier. Uh, we value their participation and we value their partnership uh, because it is important that uh, we uh, have many expertise uh, at the table uh, and therefore we definitely uh, want to make sure that we continue this strong partnership with other European countries and we want to make sure that uh, we are uh, standing shoulder to shoulder with uh, Ukrainians. Second, the Prime Minister is, as we speak, looking at a range of options and, of course, my role is to make sure that he is well aware of the diplomatic talks and as well as uh, what is uh, going on in Ukraine directly and that's exactly why I went and that's exactly why I'm still in contact with uh, our colleagues in Ukraine, including the President and the Foreign Minister. En français aussi, pas de problème. Um, mais bien entendu, il est fondamental de poursuivre les pourparlers diplomatiques. La menace en, envers l'Ukraine de la part des Russes, elle est réelle uh, pour qui Il y a une autre invasion de l'Ukraine et c'est pour ça que, euh, en tant que pays, notre objectif et mon objectif en tant que ministre des Affaires étrangères est d'être en contact avec nos collègues européens. Nous sommes déjà en Ukraine présentement parce que nous avons une opération militaire qui s'appelle Opération Unifiée et cette euh, opération vise à augmenter les capacités de la Garde nationale et des forces armées. En Ukraine, nous sommes présents aussi avec euh, deux autres nations, c'est-à-dire les euh, Suédois et euh, les Danois. Et donc, nous travaillons ensemble sur le terrain pour augmenter les capacités des Ukrainiens en matière de, 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 de sécurité. Pardon. Et donc, l'objectif est de poursuivre cette collaboration. Et euh, bien entendu, le Premier ministre est en train de regarder plusieurs options en matière militaire. Je suis en contact avec lui, je suis en contact avec mes collègues et je euh, dépense beaucoup d'énergie et de temps présentement pour qu'on soit en mesure d'avoir une réponse appropriée face à la menace russe qui est très réelle. Merci beaucoup. Thank Merci. you very much. As Merci. you heard, thank the meeting you. continues. So thank you very much for coming and see you later. Thank you.